Scene one, take 473. Action. Hey, welcome to another Friday and another Friday video. Let's do the goals update. I'm now 186 pounds, which means according to Lose It, I've lost the same amount as a fire extinguisher. Safety first, y'all. Since I know that fire extinguishers come in different sizes, I'd like to imagine the amount I've lost is bigger than this one. I could always go put it on the scale and find out, but I'm also scared and my heart will be broken if it turns out this one is more than 25 pounds. As for running this week, I've ran 13 miles, or I will have ran 13 miles by the end of the day. Three miles on Monday, three miles on Thursday, and today I'm gonna do a seven mile run. I also swam just over one mile. I did all of this while having a business trip during the week, which led to a rough week with sleep. So hopefully I get back to about eight hours this week. And with that, Stacy, roll the intro. This week, since I decided to snow a bunch where we're at, I thought we would talk about cold weather training and gear. As much as I would like to take the winter off from training and just hibernate in my little cabin here until it gets warm again, unfortunately, it doesn't help me achieve goal number three, at least from what I've learned in health class a long, long time ago. So the very first thing I recommend for cold weather running is, drum roll, the dread mill. Yep, I said dread mill. Okay, I know this doesn't really count, but honestly, I really hate the cold. And while running outside is better for my mental health, and it also just seems to lead to better results, there are times when it's wet, muddy, slushy, or it's all iced up outside, and maybe I'm a wimp. Okay, not maybe. I'm a wimp. I do avoid running in that stuff. Now I know there are some people out there already thinking, if I'm running races, I can't pick the weather for my races. And one day I'm gonna have to run in those conditions. My response to that is, that's a problem for future Tyson. Now I know not everybody can afford a treadmill, so I don't actually recommend it as a need for cold weather. I'm blessed to have one and I do use it when the weather outside is nasty, but it is a luxury, and I, I realize that. Now, to the real gear. I don't really have a list of what is most important to least important, so if you're using this as a comprehensive guide, well first, have you not been following my channel? If you haven't, here's a quick update. I absolutely have no clue what I'm doing here. I ran a full year and gained weight, and I used donuts of fuel. That was sign number one. I can only tell you the mistakes I've made. Please do your own research and know what's best for you. So the first thing I recommend is wool socks. I have two brands. I have these hairy, because I have hairy dogs, right socks that are wool. They were recommended by my local running store. And then I also have Grip 6. I only have one pair of Grip, Rick, Grip 6 socks that I bought. These by far are the most expensive pair of socks I've ever bought. I think they were close to $30 for one pair. That may not sound like a lot to some of you, but to others, including myself, $30 for one pair a little pricey. But in all honesty, they are compression, they're moisture wicking, and they keep my feet really warm. You don't need to do group six. I'm sure there are many other great options out there. These are just the two brands I've tried. And Stacy really likes these. Um, so they're, they're not bad socks, I just, I like the group six. Uh, but I would recommend 
looking at there. And if there are better socks out there that are cheaper, please let me know. I really don't want to spend $30 on socks. My second item is tights. Leggings. What does Google say? Let's find out. Okay, you kind of win. Meggings. Leggings for men. Meggings. Okay. One point, Stacy. Whatever these are called, this is what I wear. Now, I've never owned meggings until this fall when I bought my first pair. Actually, I bought three pairs. I don't have a lot to say about them besides I'm surprised at how well they actually work. I can still feel the wind through them when it's really windy. Um, but overall, they actually do a fantastic job. Also, I found that I'm quite fond of the compression that they provide on the legs as well. It's a bonus side effect, but something I've actually really enjoy. My third item is spandex or whatever these form-fitting shirts are. Now, I own two, a dark blue one and a light blue. And I prefer the light blue one much more. Why? Well, they are the same brand, same size, everything. But the light blue just reminds me of the blue shirts on Star Trek. I'm a little bit of a nerd. Damn it, man, I'm a doctor. So blue is superior, just trust me. Okay, now onto cap and gloves that I just knocked on the floor. Got a table over here, trying to be all professional. Cap and gloves. I highly recommend these. I would recommend these over tights, to be honest. While running in below 30 degree weather, your extremities get cold, and especially your hands. So if there's a breeze, plus any apparent wind that you may have from running, and yes, even at my very slow pace, there is an apparent wind, your hands will get cold. I also have a cap. I'm not sure how much this would help everybody, but as I'm follically challenged, uh, it's a big help to keep me warm. Also, our heads release a lot of heat and it's one of the easiest things to strip off and just put in my pocket when I'm starting to overheat to quickly cool me back down. So I recommend a good cap for those that need it, but gloves are number one. Now you may have noticed I haven't mentioned shoes yet. Well, for shoes, I don't know, honestly. I have the same pair of running shoes that I use in the summer and in the winter. When it gets real cold, I put another pair of socks on over my wool socks. So I don't even know if there are cold weather running shoes. The final item I run with in the cold this year is a light uh, running jacket. Hold it up for y'all. Uh, it's something that's easy to take off and just tie around my waist like a cool kid from the early 90s would. But it's also another layer to help break the wind. Uh, this is my running jacket. You'll notice it isn't exactly waterproof. I mean, maybe you won't notice, but I'm explaining it to you now. Uh, if it's pouring rain or the snow is like a really wet slushy rain, I don't actually think this is doing me any favors. But as we stated in the beginning of the video, when it's like that, I whip out and I run on the treadmill anyways. Now, on top of all this cold weather stuff, for longer runs, I also still use standard gear that's needed for those. I have a running vest, uh, which by the way, holy crap these are expensive. I bought one for training and it was a punch in the gut. I was expecting something like $30 for a vest. I mean, look, look how little fabric this is. It's just one small piece of cloth with some pouches. And this thing was, if I remember, over $100. Now, you don't need a vest for cold weather running or even for running at all, to be honest, unless you're doing long training runs. I find that any run that's about 60 minutes or less, I don't need to take water for. I'm not taking a vest, I'm not taking the extra weight. But anything over an hour, hour and 15 minutes, then I strap it on 
and then carry some water. Hydration is important and you'll notice the difference. My final tip for cold weather running, if you're in the position to do this, when the weather gets cold and you must run outside for whatever reason, like you absolutely have to run outside, just move somewhere warm. Sometimes I like to close my eyes and imagine what it'd be like when summer does come. <sighs> I know it's not reasonable, I can't do it. But if you can, just move somewhere warm. Cold weather runnings for the birds. I wanna thank everybody for all the wonderful support and motivating comments. It turns out there's actually quite a few people so far that have reached out that are training for their first long race, uh, half marathons, full marathons, and they've shown their support to me. And I just wanna let you all know, those comments mean a lot. So thank you. Please like, subscribe, and if you have any advice on cold weather gear to look at, any cheaper but still effective options that I would like to be aware of or, or the community, or just tell me to toughen up and run in the slush, well, please do so. And as always, please stay safe and remember to keep pushing. Cut! That's a wrap, people!